let's go over right here to uh, the search bar. We're going to type in or hyphen oracle.com and every Tuesday and Thursday we have Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle on. We've come uh, to really love his analysis. Additionally, if you go to tfnn.com, you can go right over to the services tab and we have two fantastic educational lectures by Tim Ord. The first one is the secret signs of market tops. On Tuesday, he was talking about he sees a topping pattern occurring right here. Uh, the question is, how do you tell that that's a topping pattern? Well, if you're curious of how to figure that out, you can go ahead and get that webinar right there. And then, of course, we have the six secret ratios every trader should know. And uh, oftentimes, Tim includes these in, he, in his analysis as well. Tim, how are you doing? Good. Good. Thanks for having me on again. So Absolutely. Um, well, as, as uh, you want, we can talk about the gold market first, or we can just uh, start with the equities. Um, you're would you be choose. Would you be uh, down to talk about gold first? Because I know Newmont's in the forefront of people's minds. You know that was quite a big shakeup, at least uh, for a lot of people. And I think just starting off with with gold might actually be pretty good right now. All right, uh, let's go to chart six. Perfect. Um, anyhow, it's uh, yeah, gold. It's I think it's kind of an anomaly. I don't see any danger you know a lot of times if it's news related it's not usually um, it's already worked into the market i'll put it that way but anyhow let's look at chart six chart six uh basically just catches the trend the bottom window is the uh, gdx 50-day average of the up down volume and uh, i took this about an hour and a half ago two hours ago and uh, the rig right now is 11.12 What's important about this indicator, anything above zero, the market's considered an uptrend. It doesn't try to pick out all the wiggles of the market because this chart uh, flipped to bullish. In other words, above zero in late March, early April, and it's pretty much stayed there. And uh, we're kind of a long way from zero. Uh, so whatever has gone on today, as far as news concerned, you know, I wouldn't be worried about it. Um, because otherwise we see a, a lot bigger divergence than what we got. But if you notice, the top window is GDX, and I have a a, a trend line, a dotted uh, blue trend line going across there around 40. So the worst case scenario, I guess you might say, is 40. And uh, um, so can there be pullbacks here? Yeah, uh, but right now. Uh, on an even a short term basis, uh, the trend's up. Uh, so I don't I don't see any danger here. Let's go on a short term view and look at see if there's any short term divergence. That'd be chart seven. Perfect. And uh, if you look back uh, in the pink area, this is December of 2023. Uh, I have a kind of a shaded pink area. Uh, the top window is GDX. Next window down is the cumulative up down volume. And the bottom window is a cumulative advanced decline. And if you notice on that pink area, the top window, GDX made higher highs. If you flip down to the next window lower, that up down volume made lower highs. <clears throat> and if you flip down to the bottom window, um, the cumulative advanced decline also made lower highs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me get a drink here. Okay. That divergence shows up now let's go to the next um, the next shaded area which is kind of a, uh, the blue shaded area and again the top windows uh, GDX there GDX is making lower highs the next window down uh, is the up down volume it pretty much went sideways it didn't really back off from its highs the same thing next lower window it didn't really back off from its highs that was positive divergence and if you go again and uh, uh, to the next window, which is the August uh, time frame of this year, GDX uh, had a pullback. That ratio made higher lows. Uh, the bottom window did make a lower low, but you know, still a, a positive divergence. And in the current time frame, you got GDX making higher highs. Uh, that's kind of the purple area we're talking about. And the the up down volume made higher highs and also the advanced line made higher highs. So this is a shorter term type indicator and it has no divergence in it. So my bet, uh, today's pullback is, is probably more or less just anomaly and um, the rally hasn't finished yet, I'll put it that way. I see. So I don't think of any top of any consequences forming here. 
because there's no divergence showing up on the advanced decline or up down volume, even on the short term time frames. Right. So um, I think we're good. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, we can so, move over to you know, the. Uh, the you'll, you'll have these scare th- scare things going forward. So this is part of the market shake everybody out. So, Definitely, that's how I'm looking at it. Anyhow, does a good job of so, doing that sometimes too. So, well, yeah, yeah let's move over yeah. to the uh, the equities then. All right, uh, first window is our, our chart number one. I uh, displayed this uh, Tuesday. Kind of shows you where we are right now. This is a sentiment indicator. In other words, this is what the public thinks what's going to go what's going to go happen and uh, they were pretty uh, the bottom window is the equity put call ratio readings on a 10-day average so that's two weeks of put call ratio readings next window up uh, from the bottom is the five-day average of the equity put call ratio readings if you got readings right around 0.55 in both of them which both of them are right now uh, still even in uh, over the last couple of, even over the last week, the market's pulled back. Those ratios are still relatively in bearish territory. In other words, the, uh, the, the buying or the public trading option traders are actually buying too much calls here. They're, they're optimistic. Uh-huh. And so you can see what happens in the past. This chart goes back, uh, looks like close to a couple of years. And the, the, dotted lines show the times when this those ratios got into bearish territory so still expect a pullback we don't think the pullback's done yet uh we think at minimum it's probably going to bottom next week so i'm, I'm thinking more fireworks to the downside the market's been extremely quiet and usually it's quiet before the storm so um seminar wise we, we got a chance to to kind of a scare to the bottom i think because there's too many people leaning bullish on the market right now. Let's go to chart two. Sure. Uh, chart two, the bottom window is a weekly SPX fixed ratio. The next window up is a weekly SPX. And this, this uh, anyhow, when the ratio makes lower highs as the S&Ps make higher highs, that's a negative divergence. And, and those are, um, well, I can wait. Yeah, Tim, so. stay right there, folks. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle after this break. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoot. We're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, Tim, we actually had a question in the den uh, from AG. Okay. Uh, and I asked a question, but I understood what he meant after I sent that. He was saying on the second window with the CPC, this is on the, the first chart, is you often have a dotted line at that 0.55 or the 0.62 on the CPC. I believe he's talking about this blue uh, horizontal dotted line. He's asking oh, what that signifies. Right. Yeah, I actually I wanted to talk about that. Um, let's, go, yeah, let's go back to chart one. The, the, uh, this is the equity put call ratio reading five and 10 day average. Uh, so anyhow, we're in bearish territory on both those uh, moving averages. And what I got, just as a reminder, I kind of watched, I update my charge quite a bit. And I put that note in there. It has scenario. I have uh, in red lines what he's talking about. Is that- uh, I think he was referring to the blue dotted line right at that. Almost right. looks like it's yeah. 0.55. Blue. Yeah. Right. But drew a dotted line. So the next low, uh, the scenario is that these two ratios, the five and 10 day equity put call ratio readings, should rally back to, uh, to round those blue lines. Uh, so, because I, I didn't put them in there, but previously over the last couple of months, when those when those two ratios rose up around points, uh, you know, point seven five, point seven area, uh, that would be people buying too many puts. Da da da. That would be bullish. Now I'm thinking that's where those two ratios are going to go. And that's going to help me define where that next low will be. I so, see. Awesome. Well, thanks for answering so that. That's why, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's. Uh, I meant to talk about that, but I'm I'm watching how that ratio is going to rise. So if you see a big spike in this ratio, up around 0.7 or higher, uh, then then that's another way of saying you got panic in the market. And panic only only forms at lows in the market. So if you don't have panic, you don't have a low. So we'll call ratio readings to panic, and that's one reason. That's another re, That's a, another indicator to find panic. So I see. Uh, so yeah, we'll be watching uh, as uh, we move forward here towards the election. Fantastic. So, yeah, and thanks for the question, Ag. Uh, 
So, yeah, that's a good question. I, I meant to cover that, and I got didn't think about it. But anyhow, let's go to chart two. Fantastic. Um, this, uh, this is the uh, S, or the bottom window is the SPX VIX ratio uh, on a weekly time frame. Next higher window is the SPX on a weekly. And I got shaded in pink the times where uh, SPX made higher highs, the ratio made lower highs. That's the bearish divergence predicts the market's going to pull back. And we actually had to have have had a divergence this July and, uh, and that divergence is still present so even though the market has hit higher highs that ratio continue to make a lower high so it's still in a divergence going on but what I'm going to look for on the next flow if you notice I have a green area um, July of, of uh, 2022 see that green area yes well, the, the point I'm trying to make there is if I have a blue line on the SPX where the SPX made lower highs, that ratio made higher highs. The SPX VIX ratio leads SPX. Not perfectly, but it's another, word, it's another way to confirm uh, the uptrends and downtrends. So as this market does bottom out, that ratio at the bottom will start making higher highs before the SPX will make higher highs. See. So, uh, so that's another thing I'll be looking for, and that's, this is kind of a bigger time frame. Uh, I do have this on a daily, but I, uh, the weekly is easier to see and and see how that works out. So, if the market uh, is making a low and this ratio starts making higher, um, then that means the market's turning up. Okay, so that will happen on the next next turn up so it's another thing i'll be watching for so far that hasn't happened yet so even though the market's kind of dead here uh it hasn't made any headway since the last two weeks it's been 10 days this market's gone sideways um so let's flip to chart three sure uh chart three this is uh i went back and checked the 2016 low the, the election low of 2016 where Hillary and, and uh, Trump were candidates, and also checked in 2020, where uh, uh, Trump uh, Trump and uh, Biden were candidates. And both those bottoms uh, in those two elections, you know, they bottomed back in both, uh, market did decline going in both those elections. And for some reason, the 10-day trend did not pick that out. And I think it's just anomaly. It's kind of unusual. You don't have uh, presidential elections every year. Or so, but what did pick it out is the RSI of the SPX tilt ratio did. So this is another indicator that it actually should line up and help define that next low. Um, uh, so this is uh, uh, right now. Yeah, this is current. So we got the RSI up around seventy. I think we actually hit 82 going into this last I, as far as the eyes, eyes concerned, RSI is concerned, and we're just finally starting to back away. When I made this chart, we're at 6450, needs to get down around 30. This is just another low. Uh, the bottom one is the SPX. That's a possible downside target It'll be right around that 5600 on the SPX. There's a gap down there, and it's also the July high and mid-August high. So that, that area has quite a bit of And a lot of times when you go down to support, you do get panic. And I would think that the 10-day trend will show panic, but maybe the only uh, one or two-day uh, trend may show panic. I don't know how that's all going to work out. But that would be a feasible downside target. But we'll be watching the equity put-call ratio readings along with the uh, SPX fixed ratio. Uh, so the market actually went a little bit higher than I thought it would, but it does what it wants to do. But uh, still bullish. Uh, bigger trends are up. Internals look fine. Uh, there's, this is not up top of any consequence. Um, so um, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I, I thought things were going to start lining up here this week. And they're just starting to. So probably next week, my opinion, will probably be a low. Uh, the last two elections of November 16th, or uh, uh, 2016 rather, in 2020, yeah. Uh, the market bottom before the announcement of the president. Right. Uh, so, uh, so the, the, once the market knows who's going to be the president, will be the bottom, and so that will be before the announcement. So, 
it won't be two weeks away. It'll probably be next week. Be my guess. Could be wrong. That's just uh, where you see that bottoming. Uh, yeah, so I'll be looking. You know, I'll let the market uh, tell me wh- where that low will be. So I have to wait for it. Right now is it's still kind of doldrum here, but it's starting to work in that direction. Uh, we don't have time here, so cool. Tim, stay there. We'll go on uh, through the next segment so we can finish the right. charts. Okay, folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oral. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. We are joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, Taking a look at the SPX tilt ratio. Uh, Tim, I just want to clarify for myself, at least on the 10-day RSI, when it ta- transgresses that 70 level, right? Yeah. You know, because you, you have it pointed going back down towards that 30 level. Is that usually what you see with the 10-day RSI? So, you know, you get this movement up. You know, you pop up above the 70, there's some resistance kind of there, and then you, we, we transverse back down to 30. Is that kind of why you're, you're having that blue arrow there? I, well, at this particular time, I am. Sometimes, you know, you, you get RSI up around, you know, 70 or a little bit higher. Then the uptrends that kind of stay above 50. I see. So okay. I'm not... Uh, and, and sometimes you hit 70, come back down to 30, go back up to 70. But it uh, depends what kind of a market it is. You know, we had a pretty a hard run up from the uh, September low to uh, uh, looks like about mid-October high. Uh, so, but this particular instance, I am looking for an RSI down to 30 because seasonality-wise, this period of time, especially in election years, the market usually declines into election. So... Uh, I'm assuming we're going to get down to 30, and we may not. So yeah, that, may, that makes sense. 30. That makes sense. Okay, yeah, awesome. So, yeah. uh, that that answer your question? It does, oh. 100%. Yeah, thank you. I was just curious for myself. Um, yeah, we have. A, let's move on to the next chart. I think this is just the spy itself, the Bollinger Band. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is uh, uh, kind of an indicator I used. Uh, it works pretty well, but... Uh, the bottom one was volume, but the next window up is the daily SPY. And this is kind of a good indicator to use. I use it on the daily, weekly, and monthly. Uh, you know, obviously the dailies have a shorter time span as uh, far as rejection once this is triggered. But anyhow, when you get 50% of the trading range above the upper Bollinger Band, I use candlestick charting or more, a lot of times you'll have a consolidation. And I think I talked about this on the last uh, program, but that dotted line across the middle of that chart is basically a 20-day moving average. And the upper line, the solid line, is two standard deviations away from that uh, 20-day moving average. And the bottom line is just, you know, still uh, two uh, standard deviations away. What I'm trying to say with the market up too far away from that line, it usually uh, consolidates at, at a minimum, usually pulls back to that line, and sometimes it breaks it and goes below it and bounces up, whatever. But if you notice back on October uh, 14th and the, and the current time frame, I have that circled there, and you can see the market's uh, 50%, it's actually it looks like about 70, 80% of, of uh, the open close is above the upper Bollinger Band. And the market did have flipped sideways here. So that's one, it's kind of a cool indicator. It's not hard to look at. Uh, if you get it, you know, uh, in, in your toolbox, I guess, it's a good indicator to look at. But the top window, I want kind of want to talk about that. And the top window is the daily SPX tilt ratio. This ratio pretty much follows the market. And it's, it's basically a, 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 the equity market against the bond market. So there's two competing markets there. If, if, one, if one goes up against the other too much or the other one goes down against the, the other one too much, you get extremes. And the market's all about extremes. And But you can kind of follow this indicator to tell you which way the market's uh, leading. You know, if you look back in July, that July high, the market kind of went flat for a while, then, then it actually started turning down, uh, hit a bottom right at the August low, then went up. And right now, we actually turned down. And even though we're up today, if you look at that ratio, this is on a daily ba- basis, that ratio did not move up. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, 
on a short-term basis here, that's a, 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 a minor bearish divergence. So um, if it did turn up, it would probably mean more sideways in the market. But since the market is up a little bit, not much, I mean, it's up a quarter percent, it's all. But that ratio has not moved at all. It still actually made a lower low. So that kind of confirms that in general, we expect this market still to move lower on a short-term basis. So will tomorrow be a down day? Uh, I don't know if tomorrow or not it will be, but eventually we'll start moving lower again, if not tomorrow, first part of next week. So you can see my target a little bit better here. Uh, I got a gap there, uh, which is, uh, I think it was September 19th gap which also happens to lie at those previous highs. That's my downside target. So, um, yeah, we can move on to the next right chart. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. True. Sure. Okay, the last chart up right. here. Yeah, la last chart. Here's, uh, I might. I don't, I don't want to confuse anybody, but, you know, the, the bottom one is the SPY, the next one up is the SPX fixed ratio. If you notice uh, from late September to uh, mid-October, the market rallied. If you notice, on a short-term basis, uh, the SPX VIX ratio made lower highs. That's a bearish divergence suggests the market's going to go down. So what I'm going to look for next, if if the market does go down, we break below the early October low. You see where that blue is line is on the SPY? Um, yes. Yes. I, all right. So my target's, say, 560 on that range. So we break below the early October low, and the ratio SPX VIX ratio makes a higher low. Okay, that's that'd be a, that's what I'll be looking for. I see. These divergences a lot of times show up on bottoms. It works better on tops on this particular ratio, but uh, it may not happen. But most likely, it probably will. So I'm thinking the VIX is probably not going to go as low as the previous low on this next low. I see. So, it. And that five sixty. Uh, 560, you know, three area roughly where you have the, that's, that's that gap up from the middle of September, right? And that's what we've been looking at on all these yeah. other charts. Okay. Right, which is also, you know, that red trend line, that's also the mid-July high uh -huh. and the mid-August high. So there's quite a bit of uh, support, support there. right there. Yeah. So probably on a one-day trend or a two-day trend, you'll probably see panic, but the 10-day trend for some reason may not. Uh, so mm. I'll be looking for the trend reading. You start seeing trend uh, get up around 1.5, around that uh, 560 area on the SPYs. And we have a higher SPY VIX ratio at that same time, even though the SPY is breaking below the early October lows. You're starting to see how the market's starting to form. So um, anyhow, those those are the type of different things I'll be looking for. So it's, it's not like I go be... You know, I feel like this market's going to bottom. I'll have a quite a few different indicators that will suggest that will, uh, you know, the five and ten day SPY or the um, five and ten day um, equity put call ratio readings may rise up around pi a point seven area. Um, you know, the VIX may make a higher low. The trend on a one or two day basis may reach uh, panic levels. So we'll see all how that all develop and. It'll be kind of fun uh, as we go into the next low. We'll actually we'll be able to do it live. So, Tim, because, it is uh, it is unreal when you come on. How much I know, at least I learn, and everyone else. Thank you so much for coming on again, and uh, we're going to see you Tuesday. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Talk to you then. Talk to you then, Tim. Guys, if you want more of Tim Ord, you've got to go to Ord hyphen Oracle. Dot com. You can also go to the services tab on TFNN and get those lectures from him. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back for a short segment.